Hi, I'm Matt Moran. Welcome to Kitchen Tales. There's nothing I like more than catching up with mates while I cook for them in my kitchen. It's where all the best stories are told. Today I've invited a friend into my home to chat about their lives. I've done some digging into their favourite food memories and while we chat, I'll be whipping up something delicious inspired by their stories. Sometimes what I come up with might really surprise them. So join us in the kitchen. I'm looking forward to sharing their kitchen tales with you. Oh wow. Oh Matty. <laughs> My next guest is Kate Peck, model, TV presenter, but let's face it, the real reason she's here today is because she loves food, but she also loves motorbikes. And guess what? So do I. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can hear one now. I'll go and check. I knew I heard something. <laughs> Hi, you? Hello. I'm glad you bought a bike, because that means after we cook, you and I can go for a ride. I saw your wheels upstairs. Well done, come on, Kaboom. come and cook. You know what? I was really excited that you were coming for, for multiple reasons. I, I know you love food. You've got a great story. But as I said in your intro, you're really here because you're a rev head. True. <laughs> we're just here to talk about engines. I don't know about this food situation. Well, I have two real passions and there's no question. There's two things that if I know I'm going to be doing the next day, and this is the honest truth, I actually don't sleep. One is going for a ride, knowing that I'm going. And the other one is if I'm cooking um, a big lunch or a big dinner for a heap of friends, and it just goes through my head, what am I going to be cooking, what am I thinking, and I can't sleep. Because I get really excited by it. You must get no sleep then, Matt. No because sleep. that's all you do is cook for people yeah. and go for mad burnouts and fangs. I know that you love raw fish as a little bit of an appetizer, so I've got some beautiful kingfish that I'm going to marinate, and we're just going to eat that and start with. And then I'm going to cook you something. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You've just got to work out what it is. But you're upbringing food. Give me, give me something. Well, so Mum was like a good standard Women's Weekly cookbook cook. Yep. And... Mate, Women's Weekly, they did a good job, didn't they? They did a great job. And she used to make this amazing beef stroganoff out of right. the um, cookbook. And I just remember the pages, yes. just crap all over the stroganoff all over the pages. And she'd buy this beautiful fillet steak, which was like so expensive for us. Yeah. Like we didn't have a crazy amount of money at all. And then she'd just proceed to cook the absolute shit out of it. It tasted Good, but it was tough as old boots that I could, I've never had the... The real one? The real beef stroganoff? Never had the real beef stroganoff. So where did you grow up though? Whereabouts? I was born in Canada, moved to Cairns and then to Melbourne. Right. Mostly Melbourne. Yep. So much good food in the, um, like around the Bayside kind of area. Yeah, right. There's so much delicious tucker down there and like all the regions, Peninsula, yep. Moose Peninsula and the Yarra Valley and Beechworth. Um, Beechworth, I love Beechworth. Great wine from Beechworth too. Yeah. Giaconda. Rather than uh, making a dressing, I'm just going to put heaps of uh, juice and some olive oil and well, a little bit a bit of lazy. And a little, little bit of chili. Oh, well, I'm going to make the dressing out of the whole lot of them. <laughs> Maybe some segments, some orange segments. So is this a typical ceviche? Because I make a bloody good ceviche. Do you, and how do you do it? How do you do your ceviche? Um, I chop up some white fish. Yep. And then I put in lots of lime, yep. coriander. Yep. Um, chili. Chili. Red chili. Green chili. Pieces of red chili. Well, yep. just whatever's in the cupboard, really. I don't know whether mine is a complete pure blood um, ceviche, but I'm just going to do my interpretation of of you know really good raw fish which has got acid in it which cooks it that's all you really need you know the lime juice is what cooks the actual fish itself so i'm just going to add orange because i actually like segments too yes you know orange segments i think they look really pretty i'm going to use some green uh i'm going to use red chili actually i haven't done it with orange before Have you? so this is exciting stuff and um who was the cook your mum or your or your dad so my mum yep. because i grew up mostly with my mum my parents separated when right. i was about five yep. or four or three and dad was in cans so yeah dad would do a bit of cooking he's quite a good cook but he'd cook all this like awful awful stuff for us as kids like stuff that we'd hate because it was like vegetables and like meat and i don't know for some reason Mum had the knack with kids' food. I guess right. when you whinge about it for long enough, you'd only have to listen to our whinging for like a hot second. 
<laughs> so, and he would, I think he would genuinely enjoy torturing us with um, all kinds of vegetable curries and dishes and... Curries? Well, that's quite, um, that's quite exotic. You're very exotic. He yeah. would, um, he travels a lot. So he rides around the world for 10 months of the year on his motorbike. So that's how I got into motorbikes. Right. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. So he has a very cultured palate. Right. Yep. Yeah. As you would. Yes, and he would always. How do you get to ride around for 10 months of the year on a motorbike? Well, you are a real estate agent and then you job share and then you retire. Right. And then you just live off the um, income of your rental properties. Wow. And then you come and then you live off the smell of an oily rag while you're traveling. That's... And you come back with more money than when you left. That's amazing. I'd like to do that. I don't know how I get to do that. Yeah, But same. you know, that's what chefs, chefs will never get that. Look at no. the color of that orange. Got a little bit of orange Ooh, there geez, left over. Geez. I'm going to get rid of that. Now our dressing: lemon, lime, orange. Put a little bit of olive oil in that. It's like a just to give it a little bit more body. A bit of salt. Uh, some chili, red chili, I reckon. Yeah. Nice and colourful. Mm. Orange and green. I don't know about them together. Orange and green. I'm thinking, what football team is that? It'd be a losing football team. It would be a losing football team? For sure. Right, so into there. A little bit of coriander. I'm going to chop that actually. So we're going to have a little bit of green too, but not chilli. Trying to work out what else you're going to Oh, cook. don't worry about that. Okay. You know, that could be for the next person or that could be because... for my dinner. <laughs> no? You're really organised. Really you must organized. eat a lot. I do eat a lot. Train to eat, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. Right, so that's just a little simple dressing. And I'm just gonna put that over there. That acid will cook that fish. I detox to retox. You, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. I've got another good one. I would die for my beliefs, but I might be wrong. <laughs> it's quite good. It's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> I like that one. I'd play that. A little taster of what I've got to offer you, Kate. This is what I call skinny bitch food. Skinny bitch food, right. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Why, because it'll just keep you skinny. You can yeah. see that now. Can I see that there, that bloodline there? That was really bright red and now it's gone um, a real dull colour. That's the acid in that dressing that's cooking that fish straight away. Because I can see it going white, but I didn't notice the red part. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's got the sweetness of the orange in it, mm. but you still got that real acidity of the lemon and the lime, but it's not like harsh. And what, like? Under three minutes yeah. to make that. Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty. You know, that's what my daughter always says to me, Dad. Why do you do it so quick? <laughs> so because I can. <laughs> Time is money, honey. Time is money. Now, I do know a little story. I'm gonna start cooking the main course. And the little story I got was that growing up, you loved to eat sausages and beans. Yes, I did. Do you know that? Can you tell me a story about that? <laughs> so I used to love, like, out of a can mm. on toast, yep. those baked beans, like Heinz baked beans, but the one with those little Frankfurts in there. Yep. And yep. I would get my mum to make them every single morning yep. until my teacher called my mum and said, you've got to do something about Kate. She won't stop farting. <laughs> and I think... Mum deducted and deduced and made her way to the thought that perhaps it was the sausages and beans for breakfast. And you know the saying, beans, beans, the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you toot. And I was just a living case of that. When I heard it, I, I seriously, I, I laughed out loud and I just thought, oh my God, if that's the case, I have to cook. Is this what we're making? Sausages. Yes! And beans. We're um, going to be farting after this. Oh, you're going to be farting all day tomorrow. But I don't have to deal with you. You'll be gone, all right? Or you might actually get that few extra horsepower on that bike. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is something that I do normally in winter, um, and it's a bit of a go-to. And I make normally two of these full. So this is a real traditional, well, it's a take on French cassoulet. Mm. So we've got some duck leg, We've got some, uh, some speck, we've got some cot de quinoa. You can use any sort of sausages. This is what I just got this morning. I got a little bit of blood sausage. 
which I reckon this is the best for cassoulet because when it heats up, it goes really soft and that's congealed pig's blood with sweetbreads and all the really good stuff. But I put it through my cassoulet and as you cut through it, you get a bit of that softness and you know everyone says, oh my God, what's that? And then when you tell them, they freak out a little bit, mm. but it's, it's the, the main flavor. Um, I've got a little bit of uh, stock there um, that I've just made, a little bit of veal stock, Ooh. some tomatoes, and I've cooked some pork belly. Looks crumbed. Yeah, and oh, I, I, keep the, I keep the top of it and I crumb it like that. And I'm gonna mix that with some panko crumbs and I'm gonna put it on the top right at the end and toast it. This is not skinny bitch food. No, yeah, it's that's all gone out the window. And the reason why I make two pots is that I've got teenage kids. And uh, whenever I'm making cassoulet, my son will ring all his mates and say, Dad's on it, um, come over. And I've had 10 kids around that table and I love it. It you know, kind of gives you time with your kids to... Fantastic. There's nothing better than sausage, no. really. I mean, and even as ugly as that one is. Absolutely. And it's a really easy thing to do because you just get some aromatic vegetables and then you basically just throw everything in. Cannellini beans and this duck, a little bit of duck fat. There's a bit of stock there too, which I love. Mm. I'll put that in the tomato. And I just peel off the duck and I just put chunks of it through. I've just got some aromatic vegetables in there. I'm just gonna put some speck. Nice big, I like big chunks, you know, rather than sort of little things that you lose. Chunky monkey. Um, this is really good. You tried that, that's cabanossi. I know, but and that's I made by a mate of mine who makes incredible charcuterie. Oh, I love charcuterie. It's good, huh? With wine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some cotechino. Cotechino? Um, cotechino, it's an Italian sausage. Um, and it's just all the good bits. I'm just gonna put a bit of garlic in there too, actually. Have you made sausage before? I have, yes. I grow pigs too on the farm, and we've made about 100 kilo of salami. Wow. Um, that we've just got curing at the moment. Whack in some garlic. You can put a little bit of red wine in this too, actually. Right, I'm just gonna take that skin off. Oh. Now, what, what about some disaster stories? Ah, uh, okay. yes. You have? Yes. Yeah? Of course. Who hasn't had a disaster in the kitchen? Um, no. <laughs> oh, whatever. No, I have, I have. So I was cooking yep. like this. Yep. Similar to this, but yep. I was wearing a bra. Just oh, a bra. I've never done that. Not, okay. Well, you should try this. Or maybe do not try this at home, actually. Right. Uh, so I was cooking. Had some beef in the pan. Well, so I was going to throw some... How did some... you come about by just cooking in a bra? Well, I clearly couldn't be bothered putting on a top and I thought it might have been a great idea, but I think I was probably just lazy. So in the bra, at home, had the pan of oil and Ooh. threw in the beef and it just splashed back and just burnt the living daylights out of my stomach. It was so painful and oh, I had man. to have my whole stomach wrapped with this like gauze right. and it would, it weeped for like, a month. <laughs> no. <laughs> now the blood sausage. Oh, it looks like um, cookie dough. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> looks like there's bits of white chocolate in there as well. Beans, duck, all in there. And I'm just going to throw all that in there. So that, that's a disaster. That was a disaster because it was really painful yeah. and I would not recommend cooking in bras. No. That's particularly for you. People out there hear that? No cooking in bras. Kids, don't try that at home. I'm just gonna add the tomato. I'm gonna add lots of stock now. Just so it kind of covers it, really. Because a lot of juice will end up coming out. I'm gonna put a bucket load of salt in there. I love salt. Yeah, you need, you gotta be careful with the with some of the sausages because they're quite salty sometimes. True. And uh, I've kept that skin, that, uh, that crackling like that for wow. the panko crumbs. That and I'm gonna, good. these are delicate. So I'm just gonna put them around wherever I can. And uh, I'm gonna cook it for about uh, two to three hours. And what will happen, it'll just all go together and it'll just start to, that'll go a lot darker and it'll just become a beautiful cassoulet. One big sausage. One big, so one big sausage. I'm gonna put it in the oven, but I'm not gonna make you wait around for three hours. Oh, 
You're a good man. So here's one I did oh, earlier. Oh, no way. You are so organized. I thought that stuff just happened on TV. No, it happens in real life. You can see that now. Look at that. I'm not gonna let you eat it actually. Does it smell like your, oh, your beans and lovely. beans and sausage from when you grew up? No canned, right. tinned anything in there. Good. So this is the real key to it, Kate. Japanese uh, breadcrumbs. And you can see all this fat and stock on the top. I'm gonna cover it and I want that fat to go into the crumbs. Oh, that just, what, what why panko panko? They're, they're just a little bit coarser um, and they're not fine. And it just, it gives it much more texture. And when they cook and they get toasty, they're much crunchier than a normal breadcrumb. Japanese use it, but it's just a pure white bread. And that's the crackling and for flavor. On the top, I'm just going to do Not that over health. the top. <laughs> no, it's all about moderation. And what we do now is we just place that in the oven. I'll turn the grill on after a little bit and uh, let them soak up. I don't mind if they wow. get a bit soaky. All right, and we're going to whack that in. Let it get all nice and toasty. Mm. And then uh, we're going to eat our feast. That is a monster cat. He's Marvin. got a fat head and he no. loves the camera. <laughs> Kate, I don't know whether you can smell that or not, but I certainly can. Right, and it's and you haven't even eaten it yet. It's like a perfume. <laughs> it's like a perfume. Look at that. Sausage perfume. Sausage perfume. Whoa, that is just. So Kate, all you do now, you can see that beautiful crust. Oh my I'm just god. Gonna, it looks bonkers. It looks like a witch's cauldron of something. <gasps> this is what they would have had in medieval times. This is what they had in medieval times, 100%. And you can see why, you know, I have a million teenage kids around here. <laughs> you know, when I'm making cats, they just smell of that. Oh, they just use you for your food. <laughs> they, they don't they, love you. They do, Matt. they do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, tomorrow uh, you'll have that great experience that you had, um, wow. that you used to have when you ate sausage and beans as a kid. Cannot wait. Yeah, I don't know who's <laughs> going to be the lucky recipient of that, but it won't be me. <laughs> right, you can see a little bit of that sausage there too. God, that smells good. Oh, I don't know where to start. Mm. It mm. looks really hot too. It is hot, but you remember how liquid it was when it went in there? Now everything's just soaked up all that flavour. Oh my Jeez, God. Jeez, that's good. Yum. Oh, winter warmer. Yeah. Well, my mum didn't make it quite like this. <laughs> mm. If you get the cabinetti now, it's just got so much more flavour. You don't have to have any bread or anything to mop it up, it's no. just... So Kate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. We had some beautiful kingfish, cassoulet, but that's only half the job done. I think we really need to get out on that tar and get on a bike. Oh yes, full gas, keep it pinned there, Matt. <laughs> done, let's <laughs> go. Oh, excited. <laughs>